Got to get the lines out, eh, Brian? They're out. All right, well, today it's all about crow admitting. You know, whenever I'm with Brian, the crow <laughs> king, we got to put our bobbers out, as we always say in crow fish. But, you know, we, we show a lot about the crow That's It's right. such a vital thing to learn, isn't it? Uh, but it's such an intense, prolonged hatch. And trout love them. They do, don't they? It's candy. It is candy. And if, what is it, like 90 for 60, 70, uh, of fish? You know, in, 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 in some lakes, it's as high as 90% 90%. of their diet. So and it's at least 50 on any other lake or more. Unreal. So, you know, we want to go through it. So today, us four fishing on the fly, again, it's all about crow admitting with the king, Brian Chap. Look at that big dog. Hey. I think it's the technique. I think it's the fisherman. <laughs> some days are good and yeah. some days are better. <laughs> <laughs> A lot better. Fishing on the Fly is brought to you in part by Islander, builder of world-class fly float and mooching reels. The Frog Boat, inspired by nature, ingenious by design. The Freshwater Fishery Society of British Columbia. Catch what you've been missing, go fish BC. And it's 16 feet deep here. 16? 16 on the nose. Starting out with the chromies. So a little... I've got an, I'm, I'm fishing a number 10. Oh, big one? Yeah. Well, that's what I've had on all week. Sir. Oh, okay. So big crony. But I mean, yeah, I know we'll put that one on. Oh, nice. Bart, first cast. First on. cast. Oh. <laughs> and they're hot fish in here, oh, aren't they're they? They're hot. Oh. Just hot fish, jumping all over. So it's probably, you know, we start out, really the show today is all about indicator fishing with chronomids. And this is a hot lake for for uh, chronomids, isn't it? Yeah, and we're prime time. I mean, we're 54 degrees. Mid-May. Surface temperature mid-May. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. The bugs are just starting to come off. Oh, we just got like you just, just cast out. I just cast out in yeah. a bank. Yeah, so they're they're definitely gonna go hopefully today and we'll be able to provide lots of tips. Good. How to hey, do her. Started with the uh, chromie? Put on the chromie because yeah. we saw some uh, you know, adults on the water, chrome is good to start with. We know yeah. they're we know they're hatching. And uh, oh, he fell off. Oh, he got off. And uh, we'll go from there. No, if that was the first fish, we probably would have pumped it. Yeah, the throw pump. But we'll get next one. Well, and a good point to bring up right now too is you said the chrome. You know, we looked at what was hatching, and there's a whole lot of little midges, but there's some nice shots. There were some water. bigger ones on the yeah. water, so we, let's give them. Steak and potatoes. And you know what? The chromie is such a great pattern. It's one of those overall, when they're feeding yeah. actively, a chromie is a good it's pattern. It's like a go. neon sign down there. <laughs> <laughs> and we got a little bit of sun, so it sets it off. So when we come back, some more great fishing, a little bit of mix, one of our favorites. You got it on it. <laughs> Yeah. 
here now, and he says, well, that's a little guy, I think. Oh, no, he's not. He's coming right towards me. He's going to jump. Oh, yeah. That's a little one. <laughs> that's a little one. Indicator setups are great, but you really need these, these pull or slip type indicators. I really like them because they'll come right off. They, they slip through. And when you're fishing long Lido's like we are today, you know, we're down 15 feet. If you don't have that, uh, the slip indicators that can actually slide down your line, you know, it's really tough Wouldn't to get release. them up. Yeah, otherwise, you got to pull the pin if it's a toothpick. Yeah. If it's pegged permanently, someone's got to reach out. And yeah, pull it all the time. Pull so what do we call these quick release? These are quick release. Yeah, and this is okay. a, this, I think this is a Phil's bob. I can't get Sky up high. What the heck? Watch that front anchor. Yeah, I know. He's got, whoa, man. Oh, whoa, whoa. I hate the way they wiggle. What is that about a wiggly fish? There he goes. Ooh. This one's a good one, Brian. Oh, I could see him down yeah, there. Yeah, my little cromer got all beat up, so I put out one of my favorite uh, trick Velcro on him. It's got a metal gray with the uh, wing buds, the orange wing buds. Yeah. Uh, for t anything deeper than 15 feet, I really like this pattern. Just because it's got the glowy yep. wing buds on yeah, it. Absolutely, and, yeah. You know, down deep, yeah. everything get, changes color, and you know, you don't get as much light penetration. Shallow water doesn't work. They don't like it. It's too big, it's too thick, but deep water, it's great. I'm it's looking forward like, to seeing it. Yeah, so kind of like those chronomids. Remember those weaved ones I tied? Yeah. That only work deep water? Yeah. yeah. Same kind of yeah. idea. So there's another tip for everybody that we really haven't given up before, is the deeper the water I fish, the more radical I make my fly. Yeah. You know, the more thicker, the more big, you know, a little yeah. bit bigger. We got, you know, because we're, like you said, we're losing light, so something, shape, silhouette begin to stand out versus yeah. color. And, and it's bigger. And it's bigger. No, it's just a little bit bigger. It's a bigger food item. This guy, I think this guy's a little bit bigger. Oh, double header. Double header. <laughs> oh, look at this. It's crazy, isn't it? Oh, that's, and these are both clocks. What is it, 9.30? <laughs> yeah. It's 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. We're getting here for an hour. Hour and a bit. Hour and a bit. And this guy's a hog brat. Like, he's nice. Like, they fight great. We're gonna have, we got a perfect... Uh... <laughs> yeah. it? Oh. i got to show you this trick though, chronomer. You're going to like it. Nice double header yeah. fry. Oh, you might as well hold for a fish, eh? Like this is uh, oh, I can't get this guy. beautiful triploid panasks. Are they over there? Yeah, oh, absolutely stunning that. fish. Look at that. Quick so look. Go, look at they're like twins. Uh, they're like twins. It's just beautiful fish. And that's what we're getting all day. Let's oh, go. What are going? I'm gone. Just like that. You want to see that trick though? Yeah, I do. Because we've been using the chromie, and then my chromie, since it's caught so many fish so far, it got beat up. The whole head came off it. So I went deeper and I went and put on the trick del chrono. Oh, that's a serious so tie. It is. So what it is, is just it's got the gunmetal gray, you know, kind of brown. Yeah. But the buds, the wing yeah, buds and the head. First and orange wing buds. So it's for deeper water. It's a thicker you tie pattern. That? Oh, I love these. You tie these? that? Yeah, of course. I'm impressed. Pretty good, eh? Yeah. Not bad. <laughs> I know it's got the little, you know, and all that is, is, is the paint. Yeah. Right, you put on that, uh, the clothing paint. Yeah. You do that, you do the normal body, and you put the bead head. Lacquered. And it's quite thick, but it works, and then I lacquer it. And the thing is, for deep water, these are great patterns. Anything below fit, what I'm yep. calling 15 feet yeah. or deeper. Uh, if I fish this in shallow, though, they don't like it. It scares them. It scares them, <laughs> yeah. But those big guys like it, so I'm going to get first gas within oh, yeah. about a minute. And you got the chrome and stuff. Oh, yeah. No, I've still got That's good. Oh, awesome. Two quick casts with that trick though, Crony. It's incredible. Isn't it amazing? That's a good fly. I know, I've already tied it on the bench. Should, have you? I have, but I can tie it again. I can tie a different version. Yeah. Maybe I I'll mean, do that. It's, wor it's worth reviewing. Absolutely. Yeah, I think so. I think what we'll do is, uh, you know, potentially we've got chromies we can tie. Uh, we've got different patterns. This could even be a special tie for the uh, website. Oh, jeez. That yeah, we use because this fly is, uh, for deep water, as I said, mentioned earlier, it's, it's the go-to pattern. Uh, it's, it's producing. And it's calm too. Like we're two casts, two fish. I know. Yeah. Proven. Nice. Wow. See, look at that trick doe crawny right in the right in the corner of the mouth, right where they always take it. And the tough part of the jaw. Oh no, go away. Oh again. Oh, I got him. There's the there's the crawny there again. They just love that thing. But look at the orange wing buds. They really stand out in deep water. So that's a critical component. All right, well, let's, uh, 
show everybody how to throw a sample. Now, the important parts, really wet the pump first, you know, bring water, but make sure there's no water in the pump. A lot of people will fill this pump up with water and then inject it in the throat of the fish. You don't want water in this pump, you want it dry. But you wet the pump, make sure the fish is upside down, kind of docile, if possible. And it's a good sized fish to do it on. Make sure it's empty, slide it in to press the bulb. Just slide it in until you feel the narrowing of the esophagus. Withdraw it and you get the stomach content and throat contents. And there we can see them in there. There's a fish there. Turn them upside and let them. Look at that. Another, another gorgeous fish. Just chrome bullets. Just beautiful. We'll just let them go. And there they go. They're not harmed. So then we get a vial. Let's empty this out. Get a little water in the, now you can just get a little water in the pump and put the contents in there. And we see what we have. And that's a really good way to get a sampling of what they're eating on. All there is in this guy is one small little chronomid, probably a chrome. There's about uh, a size 14 chromie, maybe even a size 12, and some shrimp. So there you go, you get the feed of the day. And that's a good way to throw samples. So again, make sure there's no water in the pump, compress the bulb, slide it in just to the esophagus, withdraw it, you know, let the pump go, pulls the contents out, and let the fish go. And there you go, you get the, the whole visual of the day. There are literally hundreds of thousands of different chronomid patterns you can tie and adapt to the different environments that you fish. And this is just another on the bench adaptation. And it's called the Black Bead Slinger. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the pattern. For the hook, we'll use a size 10 emerger. We'll tie with some ADOT wine thread, a 5 30 seconds black tungsten bead for the bead, some white antron for the gills, some gunmetal gray flashy boo for the body, and some red stretch flex for the rib. To start the fly off, I put my bead on the hook, and when you put your bead on the hook, there's a wide end and a, and a narrow end. Put the wide end towards the eyelet. And I've taken a small little clump of my white antron. So I'm gonna tie this right at the eyelet and have it pull forward. And this is gonna be our gills. Whip finish off. So you can remove your thread. And then what we're going to do is pull that bead up and just to form your gills on the fly. And we'll cut this to size once we finish off the pattern and retie your thread back on to continue with the pattern. For the next stage, we're going to tie in the ribbing, and there's lots of different materials out there to use for ribbing. I like the stretch flex because you can actually pull it quite tight, make a nice thin rib and it's transparent so you can actually see through it and gives it a real lifelike look. So we're going to take that red stretch flex and when I tie it in, I'm going to tie it in midway on the hook and then pull it tight just to make it nice and thin as I wrap it to keep the body thin and tie it halfway down the hook shank. Since it is a chronomid, we want to keep this body fairly thin. So I've taken only about three strands of my gunmetal gray flashaboo. I'm going to tie it in about midway again. And then wrap that thread back right to, right to the halfway down the hook shank. Get my thread forward again. And then we'll start wrapping up the nice gunmetal gray body. And again, keep it thin. The next stage in the fly is to wrap up our rib. And when we wrap this rib up, you want to pull it fairly tight. So this does thin right out. So we want to take about, you know, six, six turns up and I am pulling this nice and tight. And the cool thing about this stretch flex is you can see the gunmetal gray underneath the stretch flex and it gives it a little bit of that chromey red look. So to finish the fly off, I like to build up a nice red head behind that bead. It really, really sets off the body. So what I'm gonna do is, since I have my wine thread, I'm gonna build up just a little bit of a red thorax right behind that bead. 
once I've got it built up and tapered, I'm going to whip finish again right behind the bead. And then what we're going to do is cut our gills to the right length. And again, you want the gills just short off the front, you know, kind of a quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch, just to give it a, a little white gills off the front of the hook. So there it is, the finished black bead slinger. This is a slight adaptation from our gunslinger pattern we did tie on the website, and I just didn't put in the orange slashes of that tulip fabric paint that you can put in there. There's lots of different chronomid patterns out there. Just head to the bench, change up the patterns, and see what you come up with. One thing you should know about is casting long leaders. I mean, we're fishing 15 plus feet of water, so I'm just putting on my, my slip indicator right now. I've got about 14 feet. I want to be about a foot off the bottom. And now casting it, you've got all this leader, this extra leader on there. So really, it's all about the wide open loops. Trying to spool off a bunch of line just to get a cast out. Now all I'm doing when I'm casting is, instead of allowing my rod tip on the back cast, to be nice and tight and keep a tight loop, I'm actually opening it up. And what that means is I'm going past, you know, that two o'clock, 10 o'clock type position, even the, the 11 o'clock, one o'clock. I'm actually opening it way back, probably, you know, almost, almost vertical, just quite a way back and open that loop and allowing it almost what I call slinking out. I'm actually opening it up wide and really letting my rod tip open wide and extending my arm to allow that cast to open up so I don't hook the line. So again, we'll show everybody Really allow that rod tip to open and slow cast. Open, wide open loops, allow that rod tip to drop back, cast it forward, and that'll slinky you out your leader. Because you gotta remember, when you're fishing deep water indicators like this, you've got a little split shot or a small weight on there, a swivel, and a heavy fly. So keep those loops nice and wide. So I'm just gonna go over the basic setup for floating line strike indicator chronomid fishing. So we can start off with the, with the reel. It's nice to have a reel that's wide arbor and an outside rim so you can palm it on those really big fish. I've got my floating line on there, about 75 meters of 20 pound Dacron backing with our nine, nine and a half to 10 foot rod, soft, medium to soft action. So we've got our floating line and I'm just gonna bring in the setup that I've got here. So we're, right now we're anchored in 16 feet of water um, so we've got a long leader on. Uh, here's my chronomid pupil pattern that's tied on with a non-slip loop knot and about 14 to 18 inches above the chronomid pupil pattern is a little barrel swivel, number 14 barrel swivel, and I've tied it on with an improved clinch knot at either end. And then here's the rest of my leader going up all the way up 13 feet, 14 feet to the quick release strike indicator, which, which when you get strike releases. Okay, and then resetting it like so. And we're good to go. We're down 14 feet. It's 16 feet deep here. So our chronomid pupa is suspended two feet off the bottom. So that's the basic setup. Another double header. That's crazy. You just double headers all day. But this fish is big. This one's that four or five pound range, very nice. Chrome, just solid fish. So what would this one be, Brett? What's uh? This, this is a, oops, sorry, this is a triple like panasque. Triple like panasque? Yeah, yeah. oh. So how big will this fish get? Like, look at that, like that's, you know, that's a good four, four pound fish. They're gonna get, <coughs> they get six, seven pounds. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another dandy. Oh, so how big is that guy? Four pounds? Four no, no, five, it's like four pound four, fish. Yeah, they're just, they're just beautiful. Oh, where did he snap me off? No, he just unbuttoned. There he is, look at that. That's a slab. You know, that's four, five, you know, just beautiful. Fish, chrome. Get him in the water. Look at that. Triploid panasque. Now that's what Freshwater Fisher Society is putting in. They're doing a great job. And that's what your, that's what your uh, licenses are going to. You know, the support these kind of fish so we can make this happen. I mean, it's fantastic. There he goes. Oh, oh, oh that's another nice one. <laughs> another double head. Oh, wow. 
Jesus. I got a big now, one done. This is what it's talking about. I think yours is a toad. Mine's a, you know, mine's a nice size. It's an air size, but yours came on in here like oh. a freak. Man, he launched him. That looked like five pounds. Yeah, it's a big fish. Yeah. Oh, this is just crazy. And they're loving both, right? We have the chromie. Yeah, got so the gunmetal gray. by the throat sample with the chromie. And I put on the trick belt one because I'm fishing deeper water. So and there's a great example about matching the hatch and, and doing what it takes yeah. to catch fish. That's right. Oh, look oh. at that in the water. Oh, that's a nice size. <laughs> what a run. Oh, oh he's oh, way man. over there. I like these are great fish in here. Oh, they're no, just they're beautiful. Fish. All right. Another double, double header. It's just steady. I mean, look at these. It doesn't get any I mean, better than that. This is the generic size we're getting all day. Look at that beautiful fish. That's five pounds plus, <laughs> oh, yeah. isn't it? That's a beautiful That's fish. That's gorgeous. There they go. Come on. Just like that. that isn't that awesome? It's phenomenal. So, That's incredible. Really, chronomid fishing, <laughs> you know, chronomid fishing is the way to go, isn't it? If, you're, if you want to catch fish in a lake and you want to fish it effectively. Well, it's the most prolific hatch. They start from early spring, they go all heavy through the spring, early summer yeah. months, and then they they pick them up again in the fall. In the fall. And they yeah. eat so many of them, they, even though if there's, they're not even hatching in the fall, you can catch them on chronos. Yeah, because, because they're used to seeing yeah, them, Yeah, they've right? seen so many of them, it's imprinted. Yeah, so when you come out, you know, definitely take the effort to learn to chronomid fish. You know, the patience, yeah, you gotta have patience, but if you learn, you're gonna catch oh, a lot of fish. Look at the rewards. Check out the Goldfish BC site. Freshwater Fisher Society, you guys have done a great job. Oh, look at these products, these triploid panace that we're catching today. And that's what the you know fisheries has done. Yep. Done just yeah, a fantastic it's, it's, job. Get your licenses, you know, get out here and support it. Pay for a license and, and come and enjoy the fishery. Get the family that, out. It's, it's the way to go, isn't it? That's what pays for our stocking program. Exactly. So, anyways, take care again. Conserve the waters and we'll see you next time. We take a sport fishing on the fly. To watch all our latest sport fishing on the fly episodes and to order sport fishing on the fly merchandise head to www.sfotf.ca and if you'd like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to onthefflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.